this year at ESMO, uh, we have been fortunate to have um, important trials presented uh, that we can uh, highlight from the fact that one entire presidential session was dedicated to breast cancer trials and four important trials were presented there. Um, the first trial was also the first immunotherapy trial to show positive results for one of the subtypes of breast cancer, in this case triple negative disease. Uh, perhaps not as positive as we would like, but at least the first positive results giving hope and strength to continue to explore this possibility uh, of treatment in the future. In that presidential session was also presented the results of the uh, study SOLAR, the clinical study SOLAR, and uh, SOLAR looked into a, a PI3K inhibitor uh, that has uh, shown very interesting results, also so positive results, particularly in the group that has a mutation in the PI3K. Um, Unfortunately, for this class of agents, we also have important toxicity. For this particular uh, uh, agent, we had less toxicity than we were used to have, but this will have to be a trade-off uh, discussion with our patients. Then we have the results of um, a, a different mechanism of action uh, or a different class of agents with a different mechanism of action, the inhibitors of the HDAC. And the study was quite interesting from our colleagues in Asia, showing very interesting results and with a good uh, um, uh, toxicity profile. And finally, we had the first results of overall survival for one of the CDK46 inhibitor, in this case palbociclib, when used in combination with fulvestran in mostly in second line uh, treatment, although also can be in first line. And these were the results of the Paloma 3 that I was fortunate to be able to discuss. And um, uh, these results were kind of bittersweet. So although they Numerically, we see an advantage of palbociclib with about six months difference in overall survival, six and a half. Uh, unfortunately, the, it, this was not statistically significant, meaning that we are left with the question, is this difference a, re a real difference? Can, can we really infer from this study that there will be an impact in survival? And I think, uh, as I was um, able to discuss that the, the biggest reason for this is the way that we conduct clinical research, in particular clinical research in the metastatic setting. So I think we all need to learn that it's better, better to invest in fewer trials, but trials that are sufficiently powered to see survival results and that are well designed with the overall survival being at least a co-primary endpoint so that we can learn what is really important for the patient. If we could come back, first of all, to the SOLAR1 trial for Apolisib. Some people are reporting that PI3 is going to be a biomarker for the near future. Do, do you agree with that? Well, I think the, this particular trial only show benefit in the mutation of the PI3K. Uh, um, in the, in, the, in the subgroup of mutation of PI3K. So I believe it will have to become a biomarker used in the clinic if these agents will indeed uh, become available. I think this class of agents have, has been uh, quite of a struggle to develop them because of the toxicity. Um, uh, this particular agent has lower toxicity than we are used to see, but still, um, it is difficult to administer to all patients. And then coming back to the Impassion 130 trial for atezolizumab. You mentioned that this was the first immunotherapy in the space. Do you see this as just the first steps? Do you think there will be more immunotherapy for breast cancer after this? I believe that uh, already trials are ongoing. More trials are ongoing exploring the role of of immunotherapy, not just in the metastatic setting, but also in the early setting, where perhaps results will be better. Let's um, uh, assume that that could be uh, the case. We all have to understand that the immunotherapy is not like 
uh, um, the cure for all types of cancer and it will never work in all types of cancer and in all patients. But we need to continue to, uh, to do research to try to identify what is the subgroup of breast cancer that will really derive a substantial benefit from this approach. Then also the trial, was it Chidamide as the h Chidamide, yeah. yeah. Could you tell me more about that? So the, uh, the Chidamide uh, trial is a very interesting trial because it's a new mechanism of action. We had seen a phase two trial of a, another h inhibitor uh, that was presented several years ago. The phase three trial is of this agent that is called Entinostat has not yet been presented. And now we have another agent of this class, which is Kidamide. And um, I uh, personally, I'm very interested because the, here the balance between efficacy and toxicity is much more favorable. And um, it would certainly be uh, a new weapon that we can use in uh, the treatment of advanced breast cancer. Okay. And then finally, with the results from Paloma 3, you've described them as bittersweet. If we could talk a bit more broadly about CDK inhibitors in breast cancer, metastatic and other settings. So uh, I think the CDK46 inhibitors are here to stay. Uh, a couple of things still need to be improved. So we still do not know uh, what is the best sequence of all the available options that we have to treat the ER positive, HER2 negative uh, uh, subtype of breast cancer in the metastatic setting. We do not have a lot of data on what works best in the post-progression after a progression on CDK46. And this has to do with the way we run clinical trials again. So we stop collecting the data at the moment of progression. And this is a mistake. We need to know what to give next. So what works after progression on these agents. So a lot of research we need that way. We need to continue to invest on trying to find a biomarker. Some new uh, studies were presented still early studies not ready for clinical practice but exploring the RB gene and protein, the exploring P21 as potential biomarkers of response to these agents and there has to, uh, this research has to continue and um, we also don't know if we, we should use the CDK46 as our first option, as first line or if we should use it in second line. And something that we found out as a paradigm shift in oncology with anti-HER2 therapy, which is to continue beyond progression, we do not know if that will be something that could be applied to the CDK46 inhibitor. And, and this is one of the open questions that uh, we need. But as I was uh, uh, able to say in the discussion in the presidential session, I think now what we need is to get all together uh, and to perform a meta-analysis of all the CDK46 trials. And we need to understand this class of agents much better and what they can bring to the patient. So we have to uh, forget the fight between it, the three of them and really try to understand what the class of agent brings to the patients.